This girl doesn't know she's the daughter of a wealthy family, she's been interning for her parents for the past two years. The employees bully her into carrying water, serving tea, and even rummaging through trash. Despite it all, she stays upbeat. Nevertheless, she remains optimistic and enjoys life. The reason she does this is that in two days, she'll become a full-time employee. The girl, named Jian, was born into a wealthy family, but due to a mistake by her mother 20 years ago, she was lost. That day, her grandmother took her shopping, but when she got out, she found her sleeping soundly in the back, so she let her sleep a little longer and closed the car door. After leaving the car, not long after, a woman passing by noticed the expensive hairpin on her head and became greedy. She looked around and, seeing no one, reached out and opened the car door, intending to take the hairpin. But to her surprise, she couldn't get the hairpin off. Jian woke up, startled, as the woman swiftly took her away. Returning with the hairpin, she found her mother driving towards them. She panicked, thinking she was about to be caught, but the car drove past them without any intention of stopping. Only then did she dare to breathe a sigh of relief, and until now, her mother hadn't noticed her daughter was missing. When she looked back, she realized her daughter was nowhere to be found. Panicked, she turned to find her daughter, but then a truck rushed towards them, causing the car to spin out of control and her mother to faint from hitting her head on the glass. When she woke up, a month had passed. Then, relying on her financial influence, she offered a reward of 6 billion won to anyone who found her daughter. Human interest news was broadcast continuously on TV for many hours, but her daughter was still missing. 20 years later, the mother couldn't believe her daughter was working at the family company. Moreover, she was often bullied and even given wrong tasks by the director, so she had to take his daughter to study. After dropping off the director's daughter, she finally had time to hang out with her friends. In the director's office, she got a call to hurry to the hospital for his wife's father. Jian, on the brink of full-time employment, had to accept silently. She drove to the director's house. The director kept urging her on the phone, causing her to accelerate, but unfortunately, an accident occurred. Her car hit the rear of another man's car. With it being the director's car, she hesitated to involve the insurance company, thus she compensated from her own funds. But the man wanted 30 million won in compensation. Jian was immediately frozen. As an intern like her, where could she get such a large sum of money? The man, seeing her pitiful, allowed her to compensate within her financial means. They agreed to settle the compensation the next day. But Jian didn't know that this man was the son of the company president where she was interning. The man's name is Du Kyung, the heir of the ATS conglomerate. After Jian arrived, the director's wife scolded her and ordered her to move to the front seat of the car. As she watched the car drive away, she looked up at the star-filled sky. She blamed the heavens for treating her so poorly. The affluent family received a condition. When the lady opened it, she found two toothbrushes inside a letter. The letter asked her to undergo DNA testing. One of the toothbrushes belonged to her daughter who had been missing for 25 years. She thought it was another scam, so she threw the box to the ground. At this point, a strange phone sent pictures. She opened it to find her daughter's hairpin from that year along with a photo of the two girls. She looked at the photo excitedly, realizing that the person in the photo was Jian and Gioo. She hurriedly searched for the hairpin to match the photo, finally confirming that it was the missing hairpin of her daughter. Seeing her long-lost daughter, she was so excited that she fainted. Meanwhile, Jian is trying her best, but ultimately ends up disappointed. Only one person is chosen to be a full-time employee in the marketing department. Even after all the interns in the department put in effort, they still lost to a person with a lost connection. And that person is Jian high school friend named Hai Young. Even yesterday, they met at a gathering. Jian angrily confronts the other. Why didn't you tell me at the gathering? Hai Young casually says she wanted to see Jian defeated appearance. Jian turns off Harong's phone and asks why she's so desperate. She'll kill Hai Young and then kill herself. The two women quickly rush to fight, attracting the attention of everyone around. This scene is also seen by Duke Young. He fails to recognize the girl across the street as the one who crashed into his car last night. Jian suddenly slams her head into Hai Young's face. Witnessing this, Du Kyung's eyes widen in astonishment. In no time, they were taken to the police station, where Hai Ying demanded to file a lawsuit furiously. Jian calmly threatened revenge, then accused her of being the type to exploit relationships to steal a friend's job. Seeing the intention to accuse her, Hai Ying immediately changed her tune. In the end, Hai Ying's father appeared to resolve the matter. After they left, Hai Ying's father didn't forget to say one thing to her. This is reality, she realized, understanding she couldn't compete with connections no matter how hard she tried. Although not countersued, she was still fired by the company. When she returned home, Jian didn't want her family to worry, so she wore a mask to hide her cold wounds. While informing her family that she didn't get the job, Jisoo couldn't believe it was as simple as that. 
She snuck into her sister's room and swiftly pulled down the mask unnoticed. Despite being frustrated, Jian still couldn't speak out and silently endured. The next day, Du Kyung contacted Jian demanding 5 million won in compensation but couldn't reach her. So he sent a voice message unexpectedly heard by Jisoo. Hey, culprit, do you think you can hide somewhere in Korea? If you think you can escape, you're wrong. If you don't bring 5 million won by tomorrow night, you'll have big trouble. Jisoo thought this was a thug threatening her, so she decided not to tell Jian for the time being. Preparing to handle this thug alone and then send the meeting place to the other party. When Du Kyung arrived at the meeting place and saw no one, Jian thought she had been played. As he took out his phone to call, Jisoo suddenly jumped out, angry, and filmed him. Du Kyung snatched her phone and interrogated her why she was filming him. Jisoo said she would report him for threatening others because her sister didn't have a car, so how could she run into him? Du Kyung overheard, realizing they were sisters. After explaining, Jisoo realized her sister had caused trouble, repeatedly apologizing. On the other side, the lady received the DNA test results. One of these two people is definitely her daughter who disappeared 25 years ago, and the lady is Du Kyung's birth mother. At this point, there were some strange calls. The other party claimed that the package was sent by them, demanding a billion won to reveal the information about her daughter. And this couple is the man who abducted her daughter. The lady angrily said that as long as her daughter is found, she will reward 2 billion won. The woman was overjoyed upon hearing this. They arranged to meet an hour later. But they didn't expect that the lady would bring a group of thugs to the meeting spot. They were quickly outnumbered. From their mouths, the lady found out the address of her daughter. Shortly after, she went to Jian's house. Without beating around the bush, she directly asked Jian mother which of the two girls was her daughter. Jian mother, taken aback, said both girls were her daughters. They were fraternal twins. After a heated debate, the lady took out the DNA test results, stating that one of the two was her lost daughter. At this point, Jian mother couldn't hide anymore and had to admit that Jian was her daughter. Jian? This was the most indifferent mother Ad had ever met. When shopping, she only chose things for herself, paying no attention when one of the two babies ran out onto the street. When the mother heard the collision, she turned back only to see her daughter gone forever. After losing her daughter, she blamed herself immensely. On her way back from her daughter's funeral, she found a girl sitting and crying loudly. Seeing the child of the same age as daughter, she decided to take her to the care facility without realizing she was from a wealthy family. 25 years later, the mother and Rich, through various sources, found her way to the doorstep. After a fiery argument, Jian mother finally admitted that Jian was her daughter. After learning that Jian was her daughter, the lady urged Jian mother to quickly tell her the truth. In a few days, she would welcome her home. Based on the address provided by Ian, the lady found the fried chicken shop where Jian worked. Seeing her daughter working hard and being scolded by her boss made her, as a mother, feel extremely distressed, so she went to meet the shop owner. Then she handed over a sum of money, asking him to change Jian's job and give her this money. The boss reluctantly agreed, informing her that his grandson needed a job, so he had to let Jian go and gave her a week's salary. Jian counted the money and gave the boss the excess. The greedy boss pocketed the excess money. After receiving her salary, Jian rushed to the convenience store to buy a rice ball and the cheapest bottle of water. Her friend called her at that moment. During the conversation, they mentioned money, reminding Jian of the accident with the car insurance. She still hadn't paid the 5 million won compensation. Panic-stricken, Jian said she was busy and hung up. Then she called Du Kyung. On the other end, Du Kyung told her to come quickly to pay for the car repair. Jian apologized, saying she had just lost her job, so she didn't have much money. Suddenly, Du Kyung asked if she knew Japanese or English. After getting an affirmative answer, he immediately told her to dress neatly and quickly come over, promising to pay her the highest salary. It turned out the interpreter for the international rich party he organized had suddenly had an accident. Jian hastily ran home to change clothes. At this moment, her mother wanted to talk about her identity, but all Jian could think about was the other salary, completely ignoring her mother's words. After changing into dusty clothes and shoes, she rushed out of the house, and shortly after, she arrived at the party. In the evening, when the activities began, Jian flawlessly translated English and Japanese from the stands. Under her guidance, the performance went smoothly. Du Kyung looked at her with satisfaction, and even the guests below nodded in praise. The event proceeded very smoothly, and suddenly Du Kyung received a phone call. His sister Seol Hyun announced that she had found his lost sister after 25 years, but their parents were arguing about it, so he was asked to come home quickly. Du Kyung asked a few questions of his friends and then left. As the event concluded, Jian waited alone for Du Kyung to join her for dinner, but he hadn't arrived yet. As everyone cleared out, there was still no sign of Du Kyung anywhere. She tried calling, but no one answered. Jian began to feel uneasy. 
Before getting here to catch the bus on time, she had spent all the money in her pocket, so she had to walk home. Misfortune continued to strike, so Jian hurried to the bus station. Then, a man in a raincoat walked by and started talking to her. Jian was extremely frightened because this man looked nothing like a good person. No need. My husband is coming to pick me up soon. After hearing this, the man got back on his bike and left. After he walked away, Jian felt scared. She urgently messaged a friend for money and called a taxi, but the dispatcher informed her that there were no taxis available. She feared she would encounter the same man again. She decided to walk home in the rain. At this point, the man unexpectedly turned back. As he passed by, he pedaled forward and then stopped. Jian saw him and felt scared, stepping back. He seemed to pull something out. It turned out to be Jian scaring herself. Then he rode off. Then she quickly called the man, who was also Grad's younger brother and her university friend, telling him about her situation. Sun Wu Hyuk hastily put aside his work to find her. On the other side, after resolving the family matter, Du Kyung finally saw Jian message. He quickly drove to pick her up, but Sun Wu Hyuk had also arrived to pick her up. Coincidentally, when he arrived, he saw this and assumed Jian boyfriend had come for her, so he stayed in the car. Exhausted, Jian went home and fell into a deep sleep until 11 a.m. Jian mother entered, woke her, and handed her a new outfit, telling her to put on makeup and dress neatly. Still dazed, Jian didn't grasp what was happening. Following her mother to a restaurant, Jian initially assumed it was for sightseeing, but her mother hinted they would find out upon arrival. Arriving at the restaurant, they were escorted to a VIP room by the manager. Jian, surprised, asked her mother who the two people were. Mrs. Jian simply said they were her friends. But Jian had no idea that the person sitting in front of her was her biological mother. She was also the lady of the house and the chairman of the ATS group. After greeting them, Jian sat down with her mother. At this point, the chairman called for a delicious dish. Jian thought her mother was introducing her to a job. The chairman gently asked her to taste the food while it was still hot. Jian nodded in amazement and then took a big bite. Mrs. Jian couldn't help but shed tears at her hearty eating, moved by her hunger, the chairman then asked the manager to bring up more dishes from the restaurant. Jian, who hadn't eaten all day, immersed herself in the food. I'm not picky about food. I'm not picky, the food here is delicious, or maybe it's because I haven't eaten since yesterday. Mrs. Jian, upon hearing Jian say she hadn't eaten anything all day, looked unhappy and turned to Mrs. Jian. Mrs. Jian explained that her daughter had never been picky about food and listed many of her virtues. Jian heard her mother praising her, and just as she was about to speak, Mrs. Jian interrupted, saying she should eat slowly. After drinking a gulp of water, Jian remembered seeing the couple on a magazine during her internship at the ATS company. They were the husband and wife of the ATS company's chairman. Jian looked at the two people in amazement and quietly asked her mother how she knew these people. Mrs. Jian replied that it was thanks to her. Jian was bewildered. In fact, they were her biological parents. They hoped she would recognize them, but Jian thought she had misheard her mother, so her mother repeated it, and then Jian looked at them in disbelief. Her mother told her to live in harmony with her biological parents. After saying that, she turned and left. Jian, seeing her mother leaving, grabbed her bag and followed her. At this point, the chairman suddenly called her back, stay here. Jian bowed her head in apology and hurriedly left. After returning home, the couple recounted this to Du Kyung and their daughter. Du Kyung said he would help convince their younger daughter to come back home. In the evening, Jian waited at the gate. When Mrs. Jian saw her daughter dressed so revealingly, she immediately scolded her. Am I attractive? Mrs. Jian's anger immediately subsided. Jian told her mother that even if she were a princess, she would never leave this house. But Mrs. Jian urged her to quickly return to her own home so she could fulfill her dream of studying abroad that she had always desired. Jian happily stated that between studying abroad and family, she would choose family. She snuggled against her mother, expressing her desire to stay close. Returning home, Jian glanced at the relatives she'd lived with for 25 years, deciding to forsake her affluent lifestyle. She then informed her mother of her decision. The next day, she started working as a service staff member and encountered various challenges. While helping load items into a car, they were blocked by another vehicle. She advised the driver to move back a bit, but they claimed not to know how to drive. Jian had to maneuver through a narrow space. Suddenly, her phone rang, and she thought it was Kiyu calling to pay her wages from the previous day. Annoyed, she muttered, crazy. Unexpectedly, the lady in the car overheard this and angrily got out. She accused Jian of cursing at her. Jian quickly explained that someone had been constantly messaging her. She was just referring to the message sender. The woman reached out to see Jian's phone. When Jian was about to take her phone out, the woman snatched it directly. Jian wanted to say something but hesitated. To her surprise, it was a message from her mother. The woman thought she was lying. At this point, Jian hurriedly explained it was all a misunderstanding, but the woman thought she was mocking her. Jian's younger brother, who coincidentally witnessed the scene, bowed his head and apologized to me. Jian didn't know what to do, continuously bowing and apologizing, but the woman still had no intention of forgiving her. The woman said they had spent 10 million won here today. 
The manager swiftly identified them as VIP guests and promptly instructed Jian to apologize. Tense, Jian clenched her fists, pondered her family, and apologized. Her younger brother hesitated, glancing at his staff badge before entering to offer assistance. The woman still refused to forgive Jian. When asked why she had to apologize, Jian could only apologize. More people gathered, finding the actions of the other woman and her mother unreasonable at this point. Seeing his sister apologize, the younger brother felt distressed. After the incident, Jian returned to work like a lost soul, only to be demoted by the director. She handed over money, announcing she'd been transferred. Jian was puzzled as she had already apologized. The director explained it was the customer's request, adding Jian should have apologized sooner, because her delayed apology had displeased the customer. Jian laughed, a smile tinged with disappointment and injustice towards her life. On her way home in the evening, she tried to keep a smile on her face to avoid her family noticing. Suddenly, Duke Young found her, and Jian quickly moved aside. Duke Young explained that he didn't intend to humiliate her by asking for money that day, but her indifferent attitude had angered him. He demanded that she pay for the car repair and quickly return the money to him. Jian, feeling fearful, looked at her tightly clenched fists with tension. Duke Young then said he didn't need her money but wanted her to understand. Think twice before reacting in the heat of the moment. After speaking, he drove away. Feeling humiliated, Jian couldn't contain her emotions any longer. She sat on the ground, crying bitterly. Jian decided not to dwell on money matters any longer. Finally, she decided to call her birth mother, asking if she could borrow 20 million won. Today's session ends here. Thank you all for watching. Now, goodbye and see you next time.